Aren't we, amen, de depending on. I preached last night. Uh, I preached last night, and I really uh, felt the Lord in the message last night while I was preaching. I preached last night on this thought, when enough is not enough. When enough is not enough. And uh, all night long in my spirit, uh, I was, I, last night while I was preaching, I was saying this while I was preaching, Lord, show me thy glory. Lord, show me thy glory. Lord, show me thy glory. And I'm going to pick back up with that and try to, amen, uh, 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 show you the glory of God Almighty. All right, in chapter 33 and verse number 12. Amen, verse number 12. Amen. I want, I want, I want you to, to, I want to show you what's going on in the Bible right now. There's a cloud that's come down to the tabernacle. The children of Israel is so many feet away from that cloud for fear. Moses is standing at the door of the tabernacle. He's looking up into the cloud and he's literally having a conversation with God. He's talking to God. And the Bible said, And Moses said unto the Lord, verse 12, See that thou sayest unto me, Bring up this people, and thou hast not let me know whom that thou was, whom that thou hast. Hast not let me know whom that thou... I'm sorry. And Moses said unto the Lord, See that thou sayest unto me, Bring up this people, and thou hast not let me know whom thou wilt send with me. Yet thou hast said, I know thee by name, and thou hast... If, and thou hast also found grace in my sight. Now therefore I pray thee, if I found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way, that I may know thee, that I may find grace in thy sight, and consider that this, that this nation is thy people. And he said, My presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. And he said unto him, If thy presence go not with me, carest not up hence. For wherein shall it be known here? I and thy people have found grace in thy sight. It is thou, it, is it not that, that, that thou goest with us? So shall we be separated. I and thy people from all of the people that are upon the face of the earth. And the Lord said unto Moses, All oh, I will do this thing also thou hast spoken. For thou hast found grace in my sight. I know thee by name. And he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. That's all that we'll read, and I apologize for my reading. And I want to I wanna preach uh, just a minute about this glory. I want to tell you a little bit about what I preached last night. And uh, there's something inside of a man. I don't know what it is. Uh, there's something inside of a man that when enough is never enough. Amen. And I've seen men that had great power and men that had great many things and it looks like uh, that in those men that there comes a time uh, when they would be satisfied with what God has given them. Amen. It looks like there'd be a time that they could step back and, and say that, amen, that I have fulfilled. Oh, amen. The Bible said that, uh, uh, that, uh, that uh, 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 an old saint of God is like an ear of corn when it comes in. Amen. It starts out just one little old kernel, but when it comes in the full grain, amen, all of it, it's like a full shuck of corn, amen. That's what the Bible says about a man, but I know it by my own self, brother, that there's something inside of me that makes me never satisfied. I'm talking about a man, that, amen, a man that has so much he can't be satisfied with it. I thought, you know, when God blessed me to have this little piece of land up here, and it was God given to me, God give it to me I thought that I'd be satisfied amen, but when the land down the road come up for sale that joined me, you know there was something in me that made me want something else, and that's just the nature of man, a brother to do that to want that, and it ain't such a bad thing, I tell you I tell my boys all the time if you want to be successful in life there's a group of people that'll sit back and talk about what they're going to do, and then they there's another group of men uh, that'll get up off of their tail, uh, amen, and go make it happen. Uh, and brother, that's the way I believe that God, uh, amen, when he called Moses, uh, I knowed what kind of man Moses would be. Uh, the Bible said that he led uh, the children of God, uh, amen, all the way down through them plagues of Egypt. Uh, hallelujah. 
amen, I'm going to preach fast today, amen, through this to get to my message, amen, the Bible said that God spoke to Moses out of a fiery burning bush, and God told Moses to take the shoes off, a brother from thy feet, up to the ground that thou standest is holy ground, and God began to commission this man, and the Bible said that he gave him great boldness, if anybody knew, a brother, what kind of power that Pharaoh had, it had to be Moses, because the Bible said, he grew up a man living two lives, he grew up a man as Pharaoh's daughter, but he also had a Hebrew mother, and there was right in that same place, and the Bible said that he chose rather to suffer the afflictions with the people of God, and Moses come down to a time that he made his decision which way, that he was going to follow, and all Although he had seen many great things in Egypt, he had never seen what he'd seen in that bush. The Bible said that the angel of the Lord spake out of that bush and said, Moses, Moses, go down and lead my people out. Well, after God had showed him all of these things and all of the plagues down of Egypt, the Bible said, and now he's going up on and getting ready to go up on this mountain to receive these two tablets and remember my thought when enough is not good enough and you think that Moses after all of the glory that he had seen and all the power I mean I've never read about a man like him of the Bible said that he put his rod in that sea and the wind began to blow and the Bible said it stood up as a wall on this side and a wall on that side and the man of God a brother literally left the children of Israel up through on dry shot and they never got wet and when the enemy had come in and the Bible said that Moses smote the water again and the chariot wheels had come off of Pharaoh and brother off of his chariot and the Bible said that the enemy was swallowed up by the Red Sea but oh now Moses is a standing before God and the Bible said that he's a speaking to him as a man would his friend and the Bible said that Moses is a receiving instruction but Moses just stops and begins to talk to God and he says God Amen. You told me who your name was and when I met you there at the bush and you told me who you was. But he said, there's something that I've got to ask you. It's something that I need a brother down inside to ask of you, God. And God said, what is it, Moses? And Moses said, I know who you are by name, but God, I want to know who you are. I want you to show me thy glory. I show me, God, who you really are. Hallelujah. And God spoke to Moses and said, all right, Moses, amen, I'll show you my glory. And you have found grace in my sight. I so saw the man got up early the next morning. A brother climbed to the hill mountaintop. And God said, Moses, there's a place by me in the cleft of the rock. And you get in that cleft. And I'm going to show you my glory. Oh, church. And one of the most awesome things that I've read about in my life where an eternal God takes his hand and lays on a carnal man. And the Bible said, Amen, that God passed through that day. For Moses could not look upon God and live. But the Bible said that he laid his hand upon his eyes. And as he passed by, the hand was removed. And the Bible said that Moses saw the hinder part, a brother of God, and the glory was so wonderful that when the Bible said that Moses come down off of the mountain, they had to put a veil, a brother, over his face. They couldn't look, a brother, upon him. I'm gonna tell you, Amen. You don't have to tell everybody that you've been with God, and when you've been with the Lord. There'll be a shine in you. There'll be a glory in you. 
shall be a power of the child of this world. Amen. The Bible said that God revealed to Moses the nature of who that he was. The nature of the God of heaven. The nature of the Alpha and the Omega. The nature of the beginning and the end. What power it must have been. Amen. To see the glory of God. All right. This is how God revealed it to me. Amen. You see, all of you know my wife. This is Christy. But you know her only by name. Amen. God knows Moses. Or Moses knows God by name. Who was his name? I am. How that I am a sent you. But Moses wanted more detail. He wanted more. Amen. To know about him. Well, none of you know my wife. Of the way that I know my wife. I know what's inside of her. I know what she's going to say a lot of times before she says it. And do you know her that way? Do any of you know? I can tell by who she's talking to on the telephone, the tone of her voice. If she's talking to one of the young ones, if she's talking to, mama, to her mama, I can tell. Amen. Do any of you know her that way? Amen. You know her by name, but you don't know her the way that I know her. Hallelujah. Israel knowed him by name. But Moses said, I want to go deeper. Oh, I've seen you part the water. I've seen the plagues. But I want to know you, God. I want you to reveal to me who you are. Show me the glory. Show me, God, who and the nature of who you are. So last night in my bed, all night long, Amen. When I'd wake up, show me that glory. Show me that glory. Show me that glory. Show me that glory. Amen. I'll never have an experience like Moses. Amen. But I got revealed to me in my sleep last night, Brother Brandon, that I had something greater than Moses. Amen. I have something greater, amen, than Moses because the veil that was put on their face, amen, for beholding the glory of that man, behold, the veil has been taken away. The veil, which is to say his flesh, amen. You say eight or nine that come down every Sunday morning, hallelujah, and eat of his flesh and drink of his blood, amen, that was the veil and that was put on the face of all of the children of Israel and if that body and that veil that was glorious wrought under condemnation how much more glorious hallelujah shall the law of liberty of Jesus Christ of the Bible said amen what the law could not do he got the commandments there but the rock that he was standing on amen that that's what I want to preach about that rock and that rock that led the children of Israel in the land of day. The Bible said that rock was Christ. That rock in a weary land that Jacob put his head on and seen the ladder. That rock was Christ. That stone that the builders rejected has now become the head. That rock was Christ. I do now that day on the mountain and seen what Moses saw but I found that rock hallelujah the Bible said there's a place for me in the cleft of the rock I got in that cleft and now I don't look through the glass the way that they did but now I'm changed from glory to glory and the excellency hallelujah of the knowledge of Jesus Christ. I'm glad today he will that God has shown me his glory. I'm glad God has let me see who he really is. Amen. Oh, come on, sir. It's all. Amen. Have you seen the glory of God? I have. I've seen it. I know what the rest is. Yes. Yes. Amen. I know what it's all about. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. You see, 
receive the condemnation that they have. I live no longer in condemnation. You come in here. Now, this is how you can know if you're in Christ. Amen. When you hear of the teaching of the word and of the preaching of the gospel and the spirit of God begins to move, if you feel condemned, if you feel backwards, if you feel like it's a strange thing, amen, you're alien to it. It's a good sign that you're in condemnation. Right. Amen. But oh, there's nothing in the world like when the Spirit of God begins to move. Right. And you get connection with that. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And you're reminded again. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yes. That God is your God. Yes. And He counts you as a son. Yes. He said, I shall write upon them. I'm not word from the tablet, but I shall I'm write it upon their heart. Yes. You can't say that there's all kinds of stuff written on my heart. Right. You can't see it. There's all kinds of things written on my heart. And God said this, I'll be their God and he'll be my son. Right. Hallelujah. I didn't see what Moses saw, but I saw something greater. Amen. If you're here today, there's people here today that ain't where they need to be while she begins to play. There's people here today that's lost. Ain't where they need to be with Jesus. Oh my. It's, when they sung at the beginning of the service, I looked over at Brandon. They're singing just as I am. Where could I go? The preacher in me, I said, it makes me want to give up, give an altar call. Because I want men to find this way. I want men and women to come to this man, Jesus. That's how I know I'm called to preach. When I started a, a struggling with the call in my life, I didn't know whether God was calling me. I was aggravating people to death. Finally, I asked a preacher man that I worked with at UPS. He told me he was a preacher, and I didn't, I didn't care. I just wanted to have some advice. I went to that man, and I said, Preacher, I need to know one thing. How did you know when God was calling you to preach? He said, Preacher, I had, a, I, had a, I had such a desire to win souls. I had such a desire. And I knew God had put that in me. God's put that in me today. I want to see somebody see his glory. That's what the job of the preacher man is to do, is to take that veil off of Jesus Christ. That veil that's still on me today. Them Jews, the real Jews today, that veil your Bible said is still on under this veil. God, would you talk to the lost man? God, would you talk to the sinner? Would you get up right now and would you come pray, please? Would you do that? Would you get up right now, please? The Lord loves you today and I love you. God knows I do. I'd love to see you get saved, but I hate to tell everybody this. But the bottom line is, is everybody ain't going to heaven. Everybody ain't going to inherit the kingdom of God. Everybody ain't going to hear the Lord say, well done. There's going to be a great, great host of people that hears the Lord say, Depart from me, ye that worketh iniquity. Now you handle it the way you want to handle it. And I'm going to tell you what, it still scares me to death. It still bothers me. It still bothers me to think about going to an eternal hell. You say, Amen, that's right, preacher. Amen, don't be just a hearer of the word, but be a doer. Do something about it this morning. Would you get up right now and come? Would you get up right now and come? Would you get up right now without anybody saying a word to you? Would you get up right now and come to the Lord and repent and tell God you're sorry for what you've been doing? Ask God to come in your life and say, Would you get up right now? Would you please come? Would you get up right now? Please come. Please don't turn him. Would you bleed up right now? Church, how we've got to pray for God. How we've got to pray for God eternally. 